Hello, and welcome to, or welcome back to, Project Apollo, my series on a cattle seed world. Seed worlds are speculative evolution projects where a planet is seeded with Earth life, that are then left to evolve and diversify in this new context. On planet Apollo, these life forms are cattle, which, along with some plants and invertebrates, were given the chance to fill every niche on the planet. Without predators, the cattle's herds grew massive. There soon wasn't enough grass to go around, and the cattle had to adapt to consume new food sources. This led to a lineage of cattle transitioning to an aquatic lifestyle. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you to consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. While you're there, consider smashing that like button and leave a comment. Also, I asked the comments to name the two carnivorous species of cattle from the last episode. I'll be referring to the order of carnivorous cattle as Carnotoria. Within this order, there will be two families. The first, Asterionoides, roughly meaning akin to Asterion, is named after the Minotaur and will be adapted to killing prey by charging and stabbing them. I'd also like to mention the suggestion of calling them Smilocornus, meaning knife horn. It's a great name that I nearly went with. The second family will be named Minophilus, meaning Cat of Minos. Minos is the island in Greek myth where the Minotaur and the Labyrinth are located. This family will be adapted to kill using powerful jaws. Thank you for all your awesome suggestions, and with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Cattle are artiodactyls, a group of ungulates that typically bear their weight on two toes in the form of a hoof. Even toed ungulates, as the group is also known as, have made the transition to water before. Whales and dolphins are part of this group, with a small hoofed ancestor called Pachycetus having made the transition to a likely semi-aquatic lifestyle. Conditions are different on Apollo, as are the ungulates that have to make this transition, but the situation may have some parallels. Planet Apollo was a planet terraformed by humans. It has different geography from Earth, and one of those differences are its oceans. While Earth's ocean is, obviously, centralized, Apollo has a number of massive lakes that essentially serve as geographically distinct seas. This system, established by terraforming, certainly wasn't stable. A million years after the planet was abandoned, some of these seas have already dried up, while a few have swelled in size. These oceans have no fish, inhabited by the descendants of phytoplankton and tiny zooplankton. Some of these zooplankton have grown rather large, in comparison to their ancestors at least. Certain worms, jellyfish, and crustaceans can grow larger than a human hand. But despite the presence of these lifeforms, plant-like masses of algae and phytoplankton have managed to literally cover most bodies of water, thanks to less significant waves and currents. As the cattle population reaches its maximum size on a diet of grasses, cattle will adapt to eat other food sources in order to avoid competition. Some cattle would probably evolve to feed on the algae, taking bites from the water's edge. Perhaps some groups would adapt to start swimming further and further from shore, adapting their diets to consume more algae than grass. These cattle, without a need to dive, would likely have more buoyant bodies than most aquatic animals on Earth although bobbing uncontrollably would have to be avoided. Their eyes and nostrils might move to the tops of their heads, similar to a hippo or crocodile, to help them breathe without leaving the water. They could evolve wide, spread hooves to avoid sinking in mud and to effectively paddle through the water. Their teeth might evolve to tear chunks off the algal mats and then hold them in place while they drain the water out of their mouths. As these algal mats are eaten, they'll likely lose their monopoly on the ocean surface and form sparser patches, causing the cattle to have to adapt further for suction feeding or filter feeding, although they aren't likely to evolve baleen-like structures this early. At this point, migrating between seas would still be relatively feasible for these marine cattle. They might still be able to digest grass and effectively travel on land, allowing populations to exchange individuals, preventing these geographically distinct seas from having drastically different species. However, as the algal mats are thinned and sunlight can reach lower waters, cattle might further their adaptions to aquatic life. These more advanced cattle might be unable to migrate on land effectively, but at the same time would outcompete less derived species species vying for their niche. This could lead to these oceans entering a predicament opposite of Earth, where continents are separate and have distinct biospheres. Instead, one sea on Apollo might have species completely distinct from another ocean, and the evolution of, for example, filter feeders, might separately occur multiple times. Instead of trying to describe every one of these oceans, let's focus on the largest. Named after one of Apollo's lovers in Greek myth, Hyacinthus is a large sea near the equator that contains over 30% of the planet's salt water. Without a surface covered in algae, marine grasses, filter-feeding mollusks, and zooplankton become the prime source of food for the cattle. To eat them, some species will evolve streamlined bodies and more efficient methods of swimming. They'd also evolve denser bones to counteract buoyancy. 
Since their tails probably wouldn't be useful for swimming, their feet might lose their hooves and become broader and flatter, acting as paddles. These cattle might only go onto land to mate or to raise their offspring, forming nesting colonies similar to seals. While it might go differently in other seas, marine predators in Hyacinthus might evolve from terrestrial cattle already adapted for carnivory, such as Minophilus. These carnivores might start by hunting cattle grazing on seagrass in shallow regions of the ocean, evolving bodies capable of chasing prey down underwater. Eventually, they'd probably evolve long jaws with pointed teeth to grip prey, and larger bodies thanks to the lower constraints of gravity. Perhaps they and the aquatic herbivores and filter feeders might become the largest cattle on the planet over the next few million years, evolving a variety of forms to make use of the various aquatic food sources. Thanks for watching! If you want videos on the individual biospheres of each major ocean, let me know in the comments. The next episode in this series is probably going to be on the invertebrates of this planet, such as parasitic insects and worms, or locust-like swarms of grazers. I'm hoping to commission some artwork for that video, thanks to the support of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to suggest any artists, feel free to do so in the comments. And if you've watched this far, consider subscribing for more speculative evolution content and checking out my Patreon. I'd appreciate any support on there if you're in a position to do so, although watching these videos is certainly enough. And hey, if you want to check out more on speculative evolution, here's some content you might enjoy. Bibloridion's Alien Biospheres is a great series on xenobiology and is perfect for people new to the genre. It's definitely inspired my xenobiology projects and style of videos. Tales of Chimere by Kenan Taylor is a fantastic mix of fantasy world building and alternate history spec evo. The Ala Project is a fantastic series on some of the most unique xenobiology I've ever seen, with honestly breathtaking art. Curious Archive has a lot of videos talking about popular projects among the community. You could also check out the subreddit r slash speculative evolution. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.